Joining me right now is the Bonson Group managing partner and founder, David Bonson. Also joining the conversation all morning long this morning is Fox Business's Dagan McDowell and the Wall Street Journal's assistant editorial page editor, James Freeman. Great to see everybody this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, David, let me kick it off with you. What's driving these markets? And do you still want to be in those groups that have led this market in 2020? I'm talking NASDAQ and technology, the growth part of this market. Well, our view for some time has been that the technology sector is pretty frothy, a bit overpriced, and that the problem with that, of course, Maria, is that you just can't time what point it is that uh, reversal might take place uh, because we happen to be more value biased and particularly on dividend paying side, we don't have to worry a whole lot about where that point is on some of the big tech names because they're not your typical dividend growers, so they're a little out of our universe. The valuations are the big concern. I don't have big concerns that the Amazons and Facebooks of the world are going to all of a sudden stop being giant companies and stop being profitable companies. I do worry about the multiples that investors are paying for them. So, so what do you believe will be the driver of this market this morning? Of course, we're getting uh, more news on Moderna, where the FDA advisory panel is recommending Moderna's vaccine for emergency use. We will have a second vaccine on the market in, in uh, pretty short order. Uh, but we've still got lockdowns across the country. What does that tell you about the backdrop in this market? And what do you think is going to be the story for markets in 2021? Well, I think that the story for markets in 2021 is a continuation of what we've had the last few months, which is the market looking past what is the immediate headline and, and looking forward into where there is economic normalcy. And for the markets to have been able to price better than most of the society has even sort of envisioned things, a future on the other side of COVID, I think it bodes well for 2021. These sort of, um, you know, temporary lockdowns and miniature lockdowns, as obnoxious as most of them are, in my view, the reality is the market has been able to see that there is normalcy coming, Q1, Q2, and so forth. The story for 21 for us is a resumption of corporate profitability at a higher level, yet with a higher multiple on those profits because of monetary policy, because of how the Fed has brought down the risk-free rate and really enhanced that so-called TINA dynamic. There is no alternative. U.S. equities get a boost because of monetary backdrop, and they get a better fundamental backdrop as Americans get their lives back. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Let me ask you about China, David, and Beijing's moneymakers. The United States uh, right now going to plan to add dozens of Chinese companies to the trading blacklist. That includes chipmaker SMIC, the Wall Street Journal, also reporting on an internal clash among the Trump administration officials over how far to go with Chinese companies. The Pentagon and State Department want to take a harder line with, with uh, these companies uh, than Treasury, the uh, Wall Street side of the table, striking more of a dovish tone. We're going to get the full story uh, from the administration when Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross will join me later on this hour. We will talk about this. But, you know, look, these blacklist, this blacklist of Chinese companies is getting longer. The president putting out executive orders not to invest in these companies that are tied to the Chinese military. Pretty much they're all tied to the Chinese military, aren't they? That, that's called civil military fusion. In China, if the Chinese Communist Party wants information from any company, company, it's under the law. They have to give it. Yeah, there's a lot of gray area in, in some of it. I think ultimately there has to be a hard line. There has to be thorough diligence. Um, the biggest wild card here is not so much what Trump administration does for the next four weeks or even what Wall Street's reaction is. It's what is the tone the Biden administration will take to all of this. And when I hear their name, uh, Bob Iger, being considered for a cabinet position, I don't think that we should be expecting them to take a hard line with some of these Chinese companies. It's going to be something Something we have to watch yeah. very closely. Well, it certainly feels like if you're hawkish on China, you don't want Bob Iger being the ambassador, given his presence in China. They've got a Disney park in Shanghai, a Disney park in Hong Kong. So it certainly feels like this would be uh, a soft pick, if you will, in dealing with the Chinese. Well, it, would be it, 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 yeah. It's a soft pick, but it's also perhaps one of the most conflicted picks we would ever have in American politics. All right. We will leave it there. David, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much. David Bonson joining Thanks. us this morning on Markets. Your morning mover right now is FedEx.